this is not the video I usually make on this channel. I have... In the past, I have done vlogs. In the past, I have done videos about wargaming, about medieval history, all that sort of thing, about reenacting. Um, but I rarely do correction videos. Uh, and in part because I wouldn't presume to correct anyone who I who may very well know better than me about certain historical occasions or events. And um, and I, I I still won't do that. At least not on an on a normal basis, but um, I, I do feel it's worth alerting the historical community and the reenacting community and the wargaming community that they've, they've probably won wargaming one of the Middle Ages' most famous battles completely wrong, or at least completely wrong in, ter in terms of the geography. So if you talk to anyone who knows a great deal about medieval history or specifically the early phase of the Hundred Years' of War in, in, in France, then they will, you will talk to them about the Battle of Cressy, and you might show them a map, and they'd say, oh yeah, that's the battle. Um, you talk to a war gamer, and many of whom are acquainted with this battle either at a cursory level or maybe slightly below, uh, slightly above cursory, um, and they'll say much the same. You know, this is how it was laid out. The French knights, the Genoese crossbowmen out in front, King John, all the... The peasants in the rear coming up and storming up the hill. Storming up the hill towards the English. Men-at-arms, archers, men-at-arms, archers, men-at-arms. Between these two villages. And... <sighs> regrettably, that is... <sighs> it doesn't square with the latest research. Because that is not the Battle of Cressy. Or at least that isn't the site. This is. Common wisdom would put the Battle of Cressy uh, north of the town along the road to Calais. However, there is some evidence that that wasn't the location. And actually, there's a great deal of evidence that suggests that it certainly wasn't the location. In part, because there is very little... Very little evidence has been found of a battle there. This could just be down to government bureaucracy. It could be down to farmers not wanting to hand their uh, tools in or things that they may have recovered from the battlefield. Um, but the idea that, that this area is the origin point of the battlefield, again, these between these two villages, uh, appears to have been identified in the early 18th century. That's better part of 400 years since the Battle of Cressy. So, again, the classical account is Edward III is deplo deploys his army, uh, deploys them overnight, and because they're, they've been exhausted, they've been, been chased by the French army for miles and miles and miles since they crossed the Seine. French army, well-rested, marching out of Abbeville to meet the English, um, and it's apparent from the sources that we have that Philip really, or Philippe of Valois, did not want to engage the English in battle, uh, but was more or less forced into doing so by his men at arms, who stormed forward after the Genoese archers are repulsed. They stormed forward and shot down, try again, shot down, try again, shot down. Dragon is shot down. King John of Bohemia is killed. Philip has six horses shot from under him, and the French army flee off the hill, flee off the field. And Philip doesn't stop until he reaches a royal castle, and Edward has to hold the field overnight. So that's the classical interpretation. According to Michael Livingston and Kelly DeVries, what actually happened is a little bit more... A little bit more believable as to why Philip might not want to, or might not have expected, to make battle. For the better part of a few weeks, Philip has been chasing the English, and uh, Edward's been trying to get away. At this point, it is do or die. He has to run on, he has the French snapping at his heels, so he runs and runs and runs as fast as he can. His army covers the better part of a, of a couple of miles a day, which for a medieval, or uh, not a day, his army 
uh, two miles an hour, let's say they're marching for 10 to 12 hours a day, 24 miles a day, already really impressive, even more so considering this is a medieval army and only partially mounted. Edward's army is now marching up the road and trying to get away when Philip's army, which had been in Abdiel, just kind of bumps into them on, on this country road. You can, you can actually see it very, and you can see it right here. Um, Philip's army, and he had another column there. He had sent his army into two columns, and they converge, and, and they're supposed to converge up there on the road towards, on the ro road towards the northern coast. Um, but Edward's here, and Edward, more or less, the, Edward's, uh, the leading column of, Edward's leading column, more or less just runs in to the lead of one of Philip's columns, and so Philip has to withdraw his men. Edward has to set up his troops in a defensive posture, and very, very quickly. He orders his archers into the woods, and again, while this is not... This is not the, again, like, not much archaeology has been done on this, um, but the geography more or less fits what we've been told in the sources. Unlike that, which it doesn't fit, which the geography doesn't fit, this does, because we're told it took place around or below the forest of Kaisi, which, granted, the forest probably has receded, in the many, many centuries, in the mists of time that have uh, almost 700 years now between the battle and today. Um, and again, no no recollection in any of the sources that Wadinkor or Cressy were taken by the English. And that would have been mentioned because, again, marching by roads, that would have been a grand total of about 40 miles in a day. Edward's army would not have been in condition to fight after forty after a forty mile march, even if they had modern transport. Again, we're talking about thirteen forty six. There was no modern transport in those days. What really what now happens is the classical interpret is more or less the classical interpretation. The Genoese are deployed. Philip, taken completely by surprise, has to is going to use the crossbows to, in this case, form a coherent, uh, give it time, give them time to form a coherent battle line, or the crossbows forward. They get funneled in by woods on either side and get slaughtered by the long, by the uh, arrows of the longbowmen. It makes a lot more sense actually in this interpretation. Because the Italians, by most accounts, or just common sense would tell us, if they were on the march, they weren't wearing their pavises, the shields that they would carry on their back. And the fact that they broke so quickly while reloading their crossbows and getting a murderous, getting murderously shot at by English longbows would seem to indicate that they were not prepared at all for a battle. At least not right. Not, at least not at that time. Had it been of the sort of the Battle of Crecy that people like Seward or, or, or others have put forward. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm, I must say that, you know, they, they were operating with the type of, the type of information that they had. It would, it would have made more sense in their, ver in this battlefield, because again, it's a prepared battlefield that you would have brought your pavises with you. This Makes more sense. Once the crossbows are routed, Philip's, um, I believe it's his brother, the Count of, Al of Alençon, orders the heavy cavalry to charge. The rest, as they say, is history. So that about wraps it up. I would, um, as a couple of bits of uh, book recommendations for this and for which I got some of, or most of my research actually, was... Uh, Cressy Battlefield Hand um, Case Study or Hand Guide, I forget, uh, by Michael Livingston and Kelly DeVries, who were at that both at that stage um, doing research work and being professors at the Citadel in South Carolina, which is a military school. 
and also Michael Livingston's Crecy, Battle of the Five Kings. Um, that contains a great deal of information, not only about the battle, but about the campaign entirely, talking about the battlefield, why he thinks the battlefield, and again, with his book with Kelly DeVries, going over, talking about the battlefield, why it doesn't fit where it was identified in 1704, why it fits in the location, or at least more or less fits in the location which he has identified with Kelly DeVries as probably being the actual battlefield of 1346. Um, if there's any questions or comments or things that you would like to see in another video, please let me know in the comments. Till then, adieu.